Well, that's definitely not my best 17 hour print. I was reached out by Pergear if I wanted to take a look at the Creality Ender 3 Max Neo. So, okay. I always liked the Matrix, and Neo was pretty cool, so why not? You are the one, Neo. And this is the Ender 3 Max Neo. You can purchase uh, anything that you see here in the links below. And some of the standout features are a 300 by 300 by 320 build volume, CR touch leveling, dual Z access, metal extruder, and a 32-bit silent board. And if you ever built a Creality machine, this build should look awfully familiar. Now, I may have borrowed this uh, leveling procedure off the SD card. Ah, you know damn well I stole it. First, there's going to be a factory reset. It's going to clear out everything. Then we're going to do an auto home. And this is sped up, of course. Definitely does not move this fast. And once it's done with the auto home, we're going to go back and we're going to move the Z to zero it out. And then we're going to go back again. And then we're going to go to the Z offset. And we're going to move that to negatives. I believe mine was negative 3.6. Now we're going to do the paper scratch test. And make sure it drags a little bit. And then disable the steppers. This is all manual. You got to go to each corner and adjust and drag everything along and adjust the knobs to make sure that uh, paper just drags. There's no navigation on the display for this. This is why I wanted to take the extra time in this video to clarify this leveling procedure. Then you may have to go around a couple of times and just make sure that the paper just barely drags. It doesn't show it, but don't forget the center as well. Once you've verified your paper scratch test in all the corners, now you're gonna do the auto bed mesh leveling. This will do 25 points. And it makes sense, it's a larger bed, so you want a, more of a mesh. Now let's talk about the cure profile. What I did was I took the standard Ender 3 and I maxed it out here. 300, 300, 320, and I kept everything else the defaults. I mean, the retraction and everything else should be very similar, if not the same. Um, you're just going to basically change uh, your your heat in, you know, for your, your filament and um, your bed temperature. Otherwise, um, that's basically what I'm going with for this whole um, test really don't think there's anything else necessary to do. Now let's go ahead and load some filament. Now let's take a closer look at these standout features. There is a Y belt tensioner and we have an X belt tensioner. It's nice to always have these on machines. Next we have a fancy tool drawer for all your little tools. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't fit the scraper. Next we have a color display 4.3 inch and has a knob to control jog around. It also has dual Z stepper motors. Gotta keep that Z level. A plus one the size should have it. It has a beefier strain relief. And we have a Z access timing belt. There is a metal extruder and a filament runout sensor. Next, we have the CR Touch. Remember, it's 25 points for mesh leveling. How about we get some prints going? Run, Neo, run.
of course, what's the next question? How's a print? Well, start out with this calibration cube. I'm using the matte green gravity filament and looks nice. I mean, it's a calibration cube. You don't want to expect miracles, do you? But it's matte, so you're going to see more lines, other filaments, hide lines a lot better. And of course, next up is the standard Benchy. A few little wisps or stringy, but here's and there, but not too bad. Everything is in order. Overhangs look pretty good. The deck looks nice and smooth. It's just a standard Benchy. Again, you use different filaments that hides the lines a lot better. And next we have a clock spring design. All the links will be down below. This is a pretty unique design. I really like it. Look at that. It's pretty cool. And what's cool about it? Look at that. This is all print in place. Yep. Nice, cool locking mechanism on top. And um, you will be able to see that overhangs are a little bit of a challenge for it. Uh, the Ender 3 Max before had dual cooling. But as we go ahead and look at the top here, you'll see that we got some under extrusions. I didn't really think much of it until this next print. And it's going to be a, another clock spring design. This is the reciprocal vase. Now this is 300 millimeters tall, 20 shy from max volume. So let me zoom out a little bit here. From a distance, it doesn't look too bad. And you can see over extrusion right there. It's kind of hard to pick up on camera, but there is under extrusions everywhere on this print. Some of these layer lines will look okay. Got a couple blobs here, but I was also printing a little bit fast. This is a 17 hour print. That previous one was 58 hours, but there you can see an under extrusion. There's that over extrusion. And then right in the middle, you see all these holes. There, it's everywhere. And you know, this has uh, got a 10 foot rule to it, or five maybe. But as you go to the top, look at that. It's almost practically transparent with all the under extrusions. Something's going on with this printer. So I think we need to investigate. And look at that bottom layer, under extrusions all over the place too. So first I uh, tried printing it again. I just changed the heat, increased it a little bit. It just got worse. So, okay, well, maybe it's the filament. So I switched it to a Polymaker PLA Plus. Shrunk down the model a lot, but look, under extrusion. Yeah, um, it's definitely not the filament. So you try not to overthink it. I know that the profile is good, but what else can it be? And I think I know the solution. So I kicked off another print. Same Polymaker PLA Plus, and lo and behold, all it is was the tensioner on the extruder needed to be adjusted. A little bit tighter, and that's all it was. Very, very simple fix. Unfortunately, in the user manual, it doesn't show you or mention it anywhere. So I did it with the, started just printing out that reciprocal vase again, and the lines are just practically disappearing. Look at the bottom, nice and flat comparison to the bottom of the other one. I mean, honestly, it was only one, but we saw what the other green filament, it was literally under extrusions everywhere. I would say so far, it looks like we may have uh, resolved the issue, but we want to be sure. So I put the green matte creality filament back on and yep, look at that. Bottom looks great. Sides, again, I was printing a little bit fast, so it's got a little bit of blobs there. Didn't get a chance to finish it because it was another 17 hours. I have about 100 hours into this printer already. So I had to get the review out. So, yep, A-OK. -okay. Now let's talk about some um, things I noticed. You may notice that I have this uh, flex sheet on here. Let's tell you why. Yeah, it is really hard to get stuff off this bed. A little assistance? <laughs> yeah, it is that bad. I've worked with Creality Glass before, and I don't know what this stuff is, but 
it this is sped up 700 times and i uh it took me almost three minutes to get these off and the bed was completely completely cool from the last from last night that's why i went with a pei spring steel sheet next i have to say the wiring definitely it looks like it was an afterthought then we have the cooling fan half the cooling fan is blocked from the fran shroud and as i mentioned before the last ender 3 max had dual cooling this one has one as you can see though it's shifted over so there's no room for another cooling fan well, this uh, printer is pretty darn quiet. Averages around 61 decibels. All you basically hear are the fans. Pretty darn quiet. Now, this printer, if it didn't have uh, just a little screw loose, <laughs> I think it would have came out a lot better of a review. Unfortunately, I caught it a little bit towards the end here. But I think I showed you what the possibilities can be. Now, definitely has a couple little things that could be improved upon however those could be easily rectified um, I would like you to take what you learned from this video and see if this machine might be good for you I really appreciate you tuning in to tripods garage please have a wonderful day evening or weekend or whenever you decide to watch this video thanks again for tuning in